to our channel. And today for our sandcastle tip of the day, we're going to extend this road over a bridge to another platform. I know, another platform where we're gonna build a village with a road. Should be fun, stay tuned. Let's get right to it. So our visitors who live in the castle in the Bob Ross world of castles are gonna come down this road and they're gonna go over a bridge and onto another platform. Should be fun. Um, you know, I do do a, a little bit of Bob Ross painting. Um, I, he's been an inspiration to me and, and uh, you know, I re refer to him every once in a while about the happy little trees. And for me, this is a happy little castle. And, and uh, I don't uh, pull any punches. I love Bob Ross and I love, I love to paint like Bob Ross too. I'm gonna set the oval form about there and then I'm gonna hand pack a bridge of the road using this larger casting tube to get the bridge way up in the air and I'm gonna create a cute little village castle over here and that'll make for a happy castle happy castle in Bob Ross's happy castle world and the foam I put down allows for the sand that's on the form to be solid and any water that seeps down will hit that foam level and then go down to the platform level and the sand can mush a little bit on the platform but the sand that's in contact with the form will be stronger and it'll help prevent it from falling that could be one of the reasons why this one has survived the rain so many times i think four storms now in count we're gonna put um, quite a bit of weight on to this platform first so that it stabilizes. And then when the weight of the bridge um, sand thrusts onto this, it'll have some mass to resist it from wanting to jiggle. All it takes is a little jiggle and the bridge will break apart and it won't stand. Let's hope that we can keep it uh, standing. I'm hand packing up on both sides. It's kind of like how they built the St. Louis Arch. You want to balance it, build it up on both sides so you don't put any um, undue stress on any one side as you go up. It's going to be a pretty tall bridge. Should be an interesting and dynamic element to the overall composition. You know, you always want to stand back and see how it's going. And I'm liking it. What do you think, Scruffy? Approved? Scruffy's approved this hand pack of this bridge. What we'll do is we'll let it sit a little bit. We'll shape it just a little bit um, while it's really soft. And then we'll let it firm up and then we'll cut the tube out. And we'll see how well it stands. I've given it the first shaping rough cut. We're gonna have two walls that basically hold our residents and warriors of the castle from falling over the edge into the abyss. And I'll shape those walls pretty quick. this little overlay sketch for some thoughts on how I might detail the actual bridge. I like to do this to just kind of slow down and think about what we're doing and how we want to apply it to the sculpture. So I've scored and laid out for six kind of buttress-like pinnacles. I'm working at night. And I'm using this casting tube, about two inch, placing it. I've done the back three, and I'll do the front three 
as masses and then I'll detail them after I have all the mass together, have them all up. It's starting to take shape. I think it'll be an interesting bridge. So you come out the gate, you go down the road, and then you go over this bridge to the village. I guess the village is still in your imagination, but I think you get the idea. archways and buttress spires here and I'm liking the rhythm. I think it's going to be cool. I think I'm going to cut the casting tube out now. And what I'm going to do is carve from below and get the casting tube to drop. Um, and then I'll pull it forward to get it out. The casting tube is floating on sand. It's not actually touching the platform, so it should work. It should be fun. Let's hope the bridge stands. All right, I've found a real long masonry trowel, and I think this will make it easier for me to get in and finish this tube removal. And it is free. It's a nice look. It's always exciting to have it get relieved and have it stand. Now our biggest challenge for this is over time these two platforms moving independently and when they do move independently somewhere in here a crack will form. Um, I don't know how long this is going to stand. This is a little bit of an experiment for me. So let's see. We'll keep a track. We'll keep track of it. Okay, we're going to put some detail into this bridge. I'm thinking the handrail would be fun to cut through and actually see through the handrail. And I think the only way I'll really be able to get that is to make sure that the road is deep enough up here for it to, uh, to show up.
So I've cut the railing through and I'm adding a little bit more detail like walk like we're detailed to the bridge. And I'll probably do some cleaning up on that and then call it a night. A little cleaning up on that archway. the shadow of the bridge. That's pretty cool. So I've cut through the railings on both sides, the front and the back, and that's a nice look. Kathy's the one who suggested that. I'm adding archways and stone details and railings to this road slash bridge and it's turning out really nice. I like the kind of organic dynamic look of the road in contrast to the very rigid um, formality of the sandcastle itself. It's a nice um, organic element. You would take the bridge from the village and around this curvy road and up to the castle gates. Go inside the castle and take the elevator. All right, no, 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 not the elevator, the stairway. Up to the top and find the damsel in distress. If you liked our video on how we built this cool bridge, smash the like button. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our Sandcastle tips of the day. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye.